is in your hands my life is in your hands you took control when i was young when i was not able my life is in your hands my life is in your hands you took control Welcome to my show called Inspired Blessings with Jean Marie Prince. And I want to thank so much uh, for Lou Caminelli for being my guest. And he's been on um, once before, but I think I'm going to have him be like a, a repeat guest because you, yeah, because you know what? You have such an interesting thing in, in your ministry and what you're doing. And I feel that with uh, things happening in this world so fast, we need to be updated. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, you're an analysis actually of news and biblical prophecy. Um, he also began his you know, career working for NBC, ABC, CBS. And then the, really the calling of God really uh, prompted you to combine analysis and uh, biblical prophecies, right? Yeah. Which began uh, your ministry for the prophetic times we're living in. Oh my goodness, right? So you're also the editor of NewsTomorrow.com, and it's news number two, morrow.com, and the producer of the Mind Shift teaching videos, which I have enjoyed, are very informative. And so uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me on, Jean Marie. I'm glad to be here again. No problem. Um, so as we see the turmoil, the things that are happening in this world, do you see things happening that the biblical prophecies are coming true? Yes, they are. But I do want to have a, an additional point there, though. Sure. Even though there are a lot of things going on out there, there are a number of doom and gloom scenarios. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, mynewstomorrow.com deals with prophecies of the end times. It deals with news of, of doom and gloom scenarios. But I do believe that God is not through with America yet. So I have good news for you and your audience today that God is still on his throne. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that he's through with America. Good things are going to come because I do believe that God's going to bring another awakening here in this land. Right. I know that we've been pushed back for so long. We, we, it, we're just, we as the church are wondering, when's the next shoe going to drop? We have gay marriage now. The, Mr. Obama says that we're no longer a Christian nation. You know, when will it stop? So we've been retreating rather than advancing the kingdom of God. So we're just trying to hold on to what little we think we have instead of saying there are giants in the land, we're going to take them down right now. And be like Joshua, be like Caleb, and go and advance the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. I believe, let me give you a background about the awakenings. We've had two awakenings in the United States so far, two major awakenings. Now, that's different than a revival because a revival is only in the church, mm -hmm. but an awakening impacts the entire nation. Right. So the two national awakenings that the United States had preceded tough times. So the first one the first awakening that we had was before we even signed the Constitution. We had men and women of God, and they had an awakening throughout the land before they signed the Constitution. So that's why the Constitution and Declaration of Independence are so filled with Christian principles. Mm -hmm. But we had the awakening first, and then, as soon as the Constitution was signed, that was a death warrant, practically, for the people who signed those documents. Many of them were killed by the British. Mm. And George Washington, it was, a, it was a wonder, it was a miracle that he and his army were able to survive the onslaught. So before the tough times of the birthing of the nation, which he almost caused us to be aborted, before that time there was an awakening. Check, check your, the, your history. The other second great awakening occurred before the Civil War. So once again, God was harvesting his people before national disaster comes. And I do believe that we're in tough times now. I really do believe it, but I do believe that God's not finished with this nation. I do believe that God wants to harvest this nation. So I am expecting that God is going to bring another awakening before the doom and gloom scenarios. So you think the fact that there isn't going, possibly there isn't going to be a judgment to awaken them? Because sometimes it's, there's, Something catastrophic has to happen to awaken people. 
because right now they're living life as it's the new normal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're not seeing the fact that there's a need for God in their life. Yeah. So don't you think that maybe there might be a possibility that somehow God will be opening people's eyes? I mean, right now there's that new mosquito thing, yeah. right? It, now is it, I don't know, this is what I heard, <coughs> that it's a possible GMO type of genetically modified mosquito that was possibly by Bill Gates that um, he was, I don't know if, or if I'm going with this, but this is what I had heard, possibly is that Bill Gates was trying to make uh, genetic mosquitoes to be able to um, to ward off the uh, malaria or something I, like I've that. heard things along those lines. I really haven't gone too much into mm -hmm. that, but of course there is going to be pestilence and it is brought about by mosquitoes and such, and sometimes manipulated by man as well. Mm -hmm. Quite often that's going to be the case. Yet, again, before that time, I really do believe that there's an awakening coming to this nation. And I think what's happened with the doom and gloom scenario is that we just sit on our hands and say, oh, well, we're just going to watch for the next shoe to drop because, you know, so many things have been taken away from us and, and, and we don't know what to do anymore. And we've, we're not moving. We're not moving forward. We don't have faith to tackle the giants in the land. I believe that if we have a remnant rising up right now to take down the giants, we can. Yeah, I, I think then that God would have more, more uh, mercy, seeing that we're making the effort to be able to, to pray for our nation to change. Absolutely. Right, but how do I say this? I don't see enough people taking that stand. I don't even see pastors taking that stand. That's, so that's true, kind of we, scary. we need to begin. Mm -hmm. Let's begin this right now mm -hmm. because I think it, it has to start from the church, correct? It has to start from the church. Of course, it does have to start from the church. It has to start from God's people. Wow. But um, unless, unless we do have people of faith rising up and saying we can do it, like let's, let's talk about Donald Trump for a mm -hmm. second because mm -hmm. here's right. a man, some people think he's not even a Christian, but here's a man who says, you know what, we can win. We don't win anymore. We can win. We're going to start winning from now on. And that's a projection of faith. Whether he's a faithful man or not, that pro profession was a profession of faith. And I believe that that word is for the church. The church needs to hear what he's saying because we need to start thinking we can win and not think that we are defeated and we're just, you know, huddling in our little end times shelters. We need to win. We need to pursue what God wants to do because I believe, again, God's heart is the harvest. Mm -hmm. That's what, you can have harvest time during times of tough turmoil, or you can have a harvest time when it's just harvest time, when it's just a national awakening where people are, are repenting and where people are just turning to the Lord without the destruction. That's possible, it's happened twice before. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, with the fact that with Trump, um, I had, I believe it was on your news tomorrow, there was a clip and it was kind of showing how, is there a difference between Trump and Hillary Clinton? You know okay, what I'm if you're talking about, okay, let's say, let's say um, Mr. Trump even believes in pro-choice. Let's say he believes mm -hmm. that. The reason why I support a Trump Cruz presidency, and again, I don't know mm -hmm. if this is going right. to happen. Right. This would be my ideal mm -hmm. because we need to be thinking long term. We can't be thinking that just this one Christian uh, elected president is going to change everything. Meanwhile, the forces of evil take decades to destroy the nation. And we're in such a point now that, you know, we're going to need an arc of a of certain amount of years before we can rebound even. So what I'm thinking is this. Trump's anointing is the ability to destroy and to dismantle the political establishments, the PC mentality that we have in the land. Otherwise, you can't even talk the truth anymore unless you call the bigot these days. So if we had a Trump Cruz presidency, again, I'm only speaking from my own thoughts. If you had eight years of Trump demolishing the establishment parties that are literally mm -hmm. trying to hurt Christianity mm -hmm. because they went against even the GOP establishment went after Reagan, they went after Sarah Palin because they loathe Christianity and they don't want to see Christians in government. So if you had eight years of, of Trump followed by eight years of Cruz who's a Christian, now you have the demolition of this system and then you're able to build. One last point is that Jeremiah 110, 
God told Jeremiah, and he was speaking specifically about nation building. He told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I want you to do twice the amount of demolition before you can build because you have to get rid of the system that prevents the advancement of God's work. You know, on the one hand, um, I understand what you're saying. If Trump really means what he says and that he's not giving us just a bunch of baloney, okay, and just giving us what we want to hear, but I guess based on that video clip, <coughs> I just wonder if he's there, he's just put there just as a front, you know what I'm saying, to kind of um, get us to, to vote for him, but yet in, in, in the way it doesn't matter whether it's Hillary or Trump because they're kind of representing the both. A number of people believe that, and they've seen people fail them in the past. And it's hard for people to think that anybody is actually going to do what they say anymore. Now, he said some pretty dogmatic things. He's going to build a wall. He's going to win in negotiations with other nations. He's going to, uh, he's also going to advance Christianity because no longer is Christianity under his administration is going to be a target any longer. And, and the scripture says that he who is not against us is for us. And here's a, here, he, again, he's building a platform by which we can have Christianity flourish. I, I guess what it is is that people are a little bit leery these days because they heard a lot of promises from Obama. They did the opposite. You know, so I guess it's just a matter of uh, people having to kind of pray and, um, you know what I'm saying, and decide. Because I think God wants us to really, um, first of all, to vote for people that are pro-life, that represents, you know, what he, what he wants. I agree, you know I, I agree, but with, with the fracturing of the Christian church here in America, I mean, Obama says that we're no longer even a Christian right. nation. Wow. And many Christians don't even vote. Mm -hmm. Many Christians say, you know what? What's the point? What's, they say, what's yeah. the point? They also say, I need to come out of the world and I shouldn't be dealing with things in the world. And if they do vote, sometimes they vote for Obama, as mm -hmm. it were. Mm -hmm. And they toss out that vote. So we do need to have, so maybe God is actually bypassing the church because the church has been pretty ineffective in political streams. We need to change the structure politically so it could very well be that God is saying, you know what, we don't even have the people that even desire to vote. I'm going to bypass the church because I can do anything. I'm God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in someone who does have an ideal of, 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 of turning things around in this nation. God can use him. He used Cyrus as well. A number of prophetic voices, by the way, mm -hmm. have all talked about Trump, and I haven't heard one prophetic voice profess any other candidate as being potential for president. But I've all I've heard. I guess, it all I guess it was just that video that really kind of uh, opened my eyes to think, you know, in the fact that. Well, what let's kind of say that I? let's say that he's pro-choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, he comes in. No, but go he, he's got a great relationship, almost best friends, supposedly, with Hillary Clinton and, and things like that. Like, how can two. Well, he's, you know, he's a businessman. He had to deal with politicians. Right, but so, I you know. know. I don't know if, they, you know, if they're working somehow together to be able to throw votes. I, I don't know. But anyway, we'll, 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 we'll uh, kind of put that at rest for now. Um, what about uh, Obama uh, and maybe implementing martial law? You've heard of that. Okay, now here's <coughs> the thing I know we've all heard about the potentiality of martial law. A number of prophetic voices have said that. And you know what? You could even overlook the prophetic voices and just look at what's going on in the news. Mm -hmm. Because there is a law on the books that says that the president has been given the authority to bring martial law internationally anywhere on the face mm -hmm. of the earth. Right, they the say it's for ISIS, but it could mean for anything. Right. Mm -hmm. So the law is already there. Mm -hmm. So the potentiality of a martial law is present. but. I, I understand it's in the Obamacare, right? Some people have said... There, there, I think there's some clause in there, too, but I'm yeah. vaguely familiar with that. Okay. But let's take Trump. Here's a man who's coming into the presidency or as the front runner now. Let's say during June and July this year, the president starts seeing race riots in, in one city, sees bombings in another, sees sees financial collapse coming, and then he starts suggesting we may have to impose martial law. Now, who's that going to directly affect? Donald J. Trump. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a man who's the biggest loudmouth of all. If you need anyone to shame a president into not imposing martial law, you want somebody like Trump 
who would say, what are you talking about? That is illegal. That's unconstitutional. You're not going to do that. And he'd, ha he'd galvanize the people. And that is a great scenario. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I could envision that. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong, is, is that if he mean, if really means and what he's saying and he's being truthful with it, then, yeah, we need somebody who's strong and things like that. But um, again, I guess sometimes we have to, you know, realize is, does God want us to, you know, to put people in office that aren't really, you know, uh, following the ways. Okay, so here's the point. He, let's say he's pro-abortion and he goes in there, but we're not voting him because he's pro-life. Oh, no, nothing change will change at all. Right. But beyond that, once he dismantles those systems right. that are prohibiting Christian morality mm -hmm, from, mm -hmm. from progressing, then you can have somebody like Ted Cruz, who's a, a pro-life candidate, very staunch. Mm -hmm. What and about Ben Carson? I don't think he has the, the pull. I don't think he has the, the popularity, you know, and he's a very, he's a great man of God. Yeah, he, right, he is. Without mm -hmm. doubt. But right. I don't think he has the, the pull of, the, of humanity. And again, this is why a Trump Cruz running mate status, he, Trump comes in because the people are behind him. Mm -hmm. Then once Trump is gone, you have Cruz, you can, you can have Cruz, you can build. You mm -hmm. can build a moral nation then. And, and if you have an arc like that, you can really have a, a, an awakening in this nation like never before. Mm -hmm. You can start overturning things like never before. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my hope. That's my desire. Right. Do you see uh, the church waking up at all? I do. I do believe do? that they are waking up. Okay. I'm I believe there are, there are pockets that they are waking up, and I do believe that that's one of the reasons why I don't think the martial law is going to fully come in, in being implemented this year. I really do believe right. it's because of the prayers of the saints. Okay, good. I'm glad that you're looking at things more positively. Because, yeah. Because, I mean, the things that I've been hearing hasn't been so positive. Yeah. You know, yeah. the funny thing is this. And again, I come from a news tomorrow background. I could see all these doom and gloom scenarios. There are sometimes if we, we see only doom and gloom mm -hmm. scenarios, we can't see the light beyond the doom and gloom, the light that God wants to bring because we're just so consumed about things. You know what I heard yesterday? I was listening to uh, Jimmy ba uh, Jim Baker, and uh, he was saying that God gave him a dream, and in the dream that God was, go uh, that, um, United States was going to now uh, make the draft come into play. You know what I mean? Military draft? Yes. yes. For what? To go to war. The kids to go to war. Okay, yeah. why did he say that? That's what God gave him that dream. Okay. Yeah, so that kind of scared me, you know, for my kids and things like that. Well, you know, you never know when certain prophetic words are going to come to place or, mm -hmm. or the timing of these things mm -hmm. my ideal is that the timing of an awakening comes before all of those other things I believe that with all my heart and I will fight to make that happen what about the second coming of Jesus Christ do you think it's around the, right around the corner I would be surprised if it doesn't happen in my lifetime but that could be decades still it doesn't have to be we're not in the last seven years of Daniel yet mm -hmm. at all yeah, so tell us about the Daniel Prophecy. The Daniel Prophecy, and we put together a mind shift video on that, is about the 70-week prophecy. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus in the Olivet Prophecy in, in Matthew 24, he talks about, you're not going to understand what I'm saying unless... You go back to Daniel. He says, whoso read it, let him understand. Go back to Daniel. And to go back to Daniel, we need to understand the 70-week prophecy. Right. Now, we can't go into it right now, but I did have a free offer that I'm going to share right. with your viewers later on. Right. But suffice it to say that we've already um, fulfilled 489 years of, of the, those weeks, and I'm not, I can't explain mm -hmm. all the details. Sure. So we're just waiting for that last week, which is literally seven years. Mm -hmm. So it's only seven years right. be, when, when, when one thing happens by which you know the seven years begins, and then Christ comes. So we're not in that Daniel seven year pr were, uh, prophecy yet. Okay, so you're saying so you're saying the full seven years has to happen in order for Christ to come? Yes. Uh, so you are a post? No, no. No, I'm no. Because what is it? 
Uh, Pre-trib is before the seven years. Mid-trib is in between the seven years, and the post is after. What I am is pre-wrath. I believe that there's a difference between the Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord. They're not the same. Right, right. If you go to Revelation, you'll find that the fifth seal is the Great Tribulation. The sixth seal mm -hmm. is the signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And then the seventh seal is the Day of the Lord. The Day of the Lord is the day of His wrath. We are protected from His wrath. Mm -hmm. All right. But then He also said that you shall suffer tribulation. Mm -hmm. So many will die even in the Great Tribulation. That's prophesied. You know, we could think that, you know what, we're not going to be here, but a lot of people are going to die too. That's how they give glory to God, though. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that America is under judgment? You know, I don't think so. I think what's happened is that God has removed this hand of protection, which is different than judgment. Judgment is, you know what, you want to know what judgment is? When judgment comes to this land, it's going to be a military invasion, it's going to be bombs dropping on cities, it's going to be death mm -hmm. and destruction like we've never seen. We will be demolished as a nation. That's judgment. Up until now, we don't have that. Right. So I really do believe that we still can <coughs> call for and pray for the hand of God mm -hmm. to be restored over this land. Right. There's two countries that I've been hearing um, that people have been saying in the prophecies is that it's Russia and China that mm -hmm. are going to come and take over America. And you, you heard of Russia being on, on our coastlines Absolutely. and get very close to us with their... Uh, I believe that I, I, that's a possibility, definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. But that's still down the road. I don't think that's just around the corner. Mm -hmm. I think, again, we're not in those seven years of tribulation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it'd be kind of... I don't know. I think it, it, I think that disaster for America would come more closer to that time than it would be to now. Do you believe that America is the mystery of Babylon? No. Okay. All right. And you've got uh, something on that that the people can be able to see. Yeah. You know, at news tomorrow. News, yeah, news tomorrow. tomorrow news com. number two. <coughs> tomorrow dot com. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of articles there mm -hmm. and and w a plethora of information about the end times and how to look at things in a different way because I think we've been misled in a lot of areas. How long have you been studying this? Like you've been doing analysis and things like that and biblical prophecies? At about the same time that I got involved in the news in the 1980s, mm -hmm. so even even maybe even the 1970s, so there was both in my mind mm -hmm. all my life mm -hmm. long. There's been the news factor and there's been biblical prophecy and what God's Word says and you know the ability to see things Right. and to, you know, project. Yeah, so when did you become a Christian yourself? At about that time, 1980. I was born again then. What, what made you become a Christian? God's call. God called, God called, because, you know, God begins opening up your mind. Mm -hmm. He begins making you question things. And all my life long, I think God has been working in my life. Mm -hmm. Because even growing up, I was, I was, um, I was the one that was saying, no, we, we're here because of creation, not because of evolution. Right. So I was a very unpopular guy, but I learned debating skills back then at an early age, and uh, God, I think, has been using that. Right. What do you think is the one thing that uh, would happen to signal the end of the things before Jesus returns? Okay, we're talking about those seven years, right? <laughs> okay. okay, Jesus says, let's, let's take a look and see if I could see some scriptures here. Um, Jesus says in Matthew 24, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand... Okay, so, break, so stop there. Explain what that is. Okay. The abomination of desolation is the Antichrist, mm -hmm. going into the holy place. So in There's, in the, to Jerusalem? Right, into, not only into Jerusalem, but into the holy place, into, into the, the temple. temple of the, okay. So... Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso reads, let him understand. So Christ is saying, go back to Daniel to figure out what mm -hmm, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And that's whoa. okay, no problem. And you're getting so excited. I know. I'm very <laughs> excited now about this. And if you go back to Daniel, this right. is what you read. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's the seven years. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So the Antichrist does two things. He enacts a covenant, and then he breaks that same covenant. Now, we learn from this that when he breaks the covenant, he causes the sacrifice, sacrifice and the oblation to cease. 
And that's at the same point when Jesus mm -hmm. says when he goes into the temple himself. So he replaces the animal sacrifices and he himself goes into the temple as God. So he confirms a covenant and then he breaks that covenant. So the thing that starts the seven years so we can continue praying for revival, for awakening. We can continue to knock down mm -hmm. uh, mountains in right. front of us because we're not in the seven years. This is the one thing that you need to look for. Mm -hmm. You need to look for the one in Jerusalem mm -hmm. who confirms a covenant. And I believe it's not a peace covenant. Because right, because pe people think that it's a peace treaty. Right, it's not a peace treaty because it says he confirms the covenant and then he breaks that covenant. Mm -hmm. That covenant mm -hmm. has to do with the oblations and the sacrifices. It's, a, it's mm -hmm. a covenant of the Old Testament bringing back the Levitical priesthood, bringing back animal sacrifices. Now, once this thing happens, you're going to see it in the news because immediately when the Antichrist, but this is before he's officially the Antichrist, once he begins the temple sacrifices on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. That is the most hotly debated land yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. Once he does that, you will have an uprising of the Muslim world worldwide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be able to bypass that. You're right. not going to, it's not going to you know, bypass our, the news at all. So we're going right. to know that. But that's the one thing to happen. So a lot of people think, oh, you know, the end of the time is here. Is here. And yes, it is. But until that happens, mm -hmm. there's grace. Right. But now also what's happening, and we don't have too much time here, but what's happening now you know, around Israel and, and all the different uh, nations coming up against, is that the Magog War? I mean, what, what is that? Still think? not. I, I do believe that this was the thing that you need to look at. Once this thing happens, mm -hmm. you need to have that Antichrist on the scene. Right. And before that happens, continue praying. We need desperately for people to be praying and interceding for Israel, for America like never before. But And I pray, mm. I pray that we have intercessors for America because it, we don't have to succumb to Satan's plans that's, right now. Right, that's why I have a, a, a Pray for America uh, every Tuesday nights. If they right. go to my website at jimmyprince.com, go to the speaker tab and see the Pray for America to join. If you can be able to really fast mention the free offer that you were talking about. Okay, a free <laughs> offer. If you go to news to newstomorrow.com, there's a little graphic with a little picture, a cute little picture of Jean Marie on there. You click on to that and you'll get a free download that explains the 70 week prophecy. Now Jesus Christ said you need to understand Daniel in order to understand his Olivet prophecy. So you need this information. We're giving it to you for free just because you're our viewers here today. So go to newstomorrow.com and enjoy. Thank you so much for the offer. Thank you so much for sharing. And again, we'll have you back because by then I'm sure there'll be other things that's going to happen, which but we'll hope the fact that it's going to go your way and saying the fact that, that uh, there's going to be awakening and without the terrible judgment that we're thinking. That Let's might. pray it in. <laughs> right. Um, so I just uh, want to thank you so much for joining us today. And if you're interested in me to share my testimony, at your church or the venues, especially I'm, I'm now taking um, speaking for pro-life, so I actually have a platform for that because of, of my life and my testimony. Um, you know, so contact me at inspiredblessings at gmail.com. And again, I'm getting close to a thousand likes, so I'd love to if you can be able to uh, like my Inspired Blessings, you know, Facebook page, and then this way you actually get to you know know about the shows. So keep Inspired Blessings within arm's reach to help you be comfort when others are lost for words. Thank you and God bless. www.jeanmarieprince.com To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible.